Yes, yes. Starting from scratch. Uh, this is what I've always dreamed about. That is a scene from the eerie classic movie, The Mosquito Coast, staring Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. Now turned into a new series that's about to launch on Apple TV, starting Justin Thoreau. The original author of The Mosquito Coast is Paul Thoreau, Justin's uncle. Paul is a legendary American travel writer who has a new book out. It's called Under the Wave at Waimea, set in Hawaii. Its setting may be specific, but the themes are universal. This is called Alihi Beach. Alihi means a noble, or uh, it's the elite. When it comes to natural beauty and beaches, it doesn't get much better than Oahu's North Shore, famous for its world-class surfing, both professional and amateur. They're learning. Hey, so yeah. She got up. There you go. In a couple of weeks, that girl is going to be standing on a board. She'll be doing great. Yeah. For the last three decades, this part of Hawaii has been home to Paul Theroux. All the people I talk to are surfers. I don't talk to intellectuals. I don't talk to academics. I don't talk to politicians. I talk, so my whole world is the surfing world. It's the water world. Theroux's new book is called Under the Wave at Waimea, named for the famed beach just a few miles from his home. It's about a successful but troubled surfer involved in a deadly car accident who in his early 60s sets off on a road of self-discovery. For Theroux, it is, as always, gorgeous storytelling, and not without a bit of his own journey mixed in. Surfing is also a metaphor for living. We all have a wave that we're trying to surf in our life. Divorce is a wave. Unemployment is a wave. So the book is about a surfer. It's also a guy with a problem. And surfing is his way of solving his problems. One of the things I like, really like about the book is, I mean, all, all stories have ups and downs, but this one really does feel like a wave that you're riding, that he's riding. I'm glad to hear you say that because it actually, it's a book that I started eight years ago. And in, in the intervening time, I published three books. So I was always writing it with my left hand because my heart and soul was in it. Paul Theroux was born in Massachusetts in 1941 and joined the Peace Corps in 1963 to work in Malawi. He was expelled after helping a political opponent of the prime minister escape. So he began teaching English in Uganda. In the 1970s, after moving to London, he set off on a train ride from Great Britain to Japan and back through Russia. That became the basis for his mega bestseller, The Great Railway Bazaar. You said you, you sought trains, you found passengers. Yeah, I, I realized that travel is about meeting people, hearing their stories. It's not about going to museums, churches. It's actually about people who are overlooked. Mm -hmm. And the point of writing is discover something about yourself, about the world. You must feel this as, as yeah, a journalist. For sure. If you go to a place and you haven't found something new, you're thinking, what am I doing here? And you, and you would leave. You would go to another place and find something out there. Through his travel books, he prefers the term chronicles, have taken him to countless destinations. He's also written nearly 30 novels. This will do for the kitchen. That could be the laundry and wash house. Including the Mosquito Coast, about a disenchanted and eccentric American inventor who flees the country, a story originally adapted in the 1986 film starring Harrison Ford. We go downstream, Daddy! No! Dead things go downstream, Mother! Life is upstream! They found us. And now a TV series reimagined for the 21st century. Pack one bag, be ready in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. It should really resonate because the book I wrote is about a man who wants to leave the country. He said, this is not the country that I was raised in. This is, I don't recognize anything. Let's, let's all leave, build American ingenuity somewhere else. So they go to the jungle in Honduras. You built this? Yes. I needed a place to work. It started off as a guest house, but now it's my office. So Theroux himself never left the U.S. permanently, splitting his time between Hawaii and Cape Cod. Beautiful. But look around his writing space and you can see it's hard to find a man who has traveled more. Uh, New Guinea skulls, Nepal. These are from Africa, from Angola. I was in a, a little village in Madagascar and I, a woman said, eh, que voulez-vous? I said, I, I said, what's that? She said, an oeuf. I said, it's an egg. I said, of what? A dinosaur? I said, I said yeah, okay. She said, this is the egg of the giant elephant bird. 
Yeah. So this is your turn. You're going you're gonna to shoot that target. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, the target. Okay, fine. Outside, he keeps his aim sharp. You hit it. Damn you right hit. I did. He's, he's a dead shot. <laughs> Since he does occasionally have to deal with predators that threaten his chickens and geese, Theroux has also never been shy at taking on what he considers another threat. You've long chafed at celebrities who feel like they can save Africa. Oh, yeah. Why is that? First, saving Africa is a, is a colonial idea. That's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not a totally idealistic. It's, you end up being Mr. Kurtz from Heart of Darkness yeah. if you do it. Also, it's, it should be a long-term thing. Um, you get people parachuting in, they don't speak the language, they know nothing about the culture, they don't realize there's a lot of different tribal or ethnic groups in this place, and they just talk to the president. And the president, of course, loves to have someone looking after the, the medical or the, or the uh, education so that he can buy a pinstripe suit and a Mercedes. I think it's harmful, actually. A lot of aid to Africa is harmful. It has been said that every day spent on the water is a day not deducted from your life. As he hits an invigorated 80 years old, through tests that theory religiously. Paddles up. Yo-ho. When he's not rowing or feeding his beloved geese, he writes. He has another new novel already completed and plans for two more books. That's just a start. Any plans for you to stop doing this anytime soon? People ask that. What would I do? What would I do? So, <laughs> no, 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 I've been doing this, um, and it seems to be working fairly well. Tom Brady said something interesting. <laughs> he said, they said, when are you going to stop? He said, when I suck, I'm going to stop. <laughs> So maybe when, when I start repeating myself or writing badly, maybe that, that'll be a hint to, to stop. But I really have no plans to. I tell you what, he is not writing badly right now. This new <laughs> one, Under the Wave at Waimea, it's great, but what a life. It's to wake up in the morning, write for a while, then go rowing, then spend some time at the beach. I love how he talks about, it's about discovery yeah. and writing about the overlooked. Yeah. I, his 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 glimpse into humanity is just well. And the, and the big thing about traveling is not going to churches and museums. They're great, but it's right. meeting people, the people right. in these places. Great story, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, really good.